We are live. Okay, so today's notes. Let's talk about exponential functions. Okay. November 15th. Torse November. Si. Lunas. Okay, define and define and um, then talk about the exponential function. So we start with this formula. That is our formula, okay? Or we could talk about it as f of x, okay? Equals a b to the x. Okay, so for us, for us, f of x and y are the same thing. For us, when you see f of x, just think y. Okay, for us, when you see f of x, just think, oh, this James really means y. Okay, everybody agree with that? The only reason we use an fx is because this will be a function. It will pass that one-to-one -one line test. Okay, you really go. Okay, so we can graph that on Desmos, or you can put it on a calculator. Um, but it will work on Desmos. Let me grab my phone so you guys can see it on my Desmos. All right, get my phone out. Okay, so go to my math. Math Desmos. And I don't know if you guys have Desmos. Um, I'm going to go y equals my three parentheses. I'm going to go two parentheses to the power of to the power of x. Okay, there it is. All right. So, a couple of features that are really important. Three things on a test. Three things. One is the shape. You see the shape of the graph? So your shape better be curvy like like a J, okay? On a test, three things. One, the shape, you guys got the idea of the shape. Kind of J, just exponential growth. Two, the y-intercept is at three. You guys see that? So let's make sure the y-intercept is in the right, right place. The third thing I want is I want the asymptote, okay? So let's graph it. You know it's gonna start at three, yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and at one, two, one, two, three. I need that. I need it to go and have this shape right here. Okay. And then I also need to put in my asymptote, which is this invisible boundary line. There's my asymptote at y equals zero. Okay. y equals 0. Okay? How am I doing? Thumbs up. Anybody need any help with this? Okay. The y-intercept. y-intercept is right there at 0, 3. Right? That's my y-intercept. It's 0, 3. Will the graph ever equal 0? Please say no. Will the graph ever equal 0? Please say no. no. You guys agree? Never gonna reach zero. Okay, agree that. So no, graph will never reach reach zero. So no. Domain. Domain is all x values. So two ways to interpret the domain. One is the x values. I can plug in anything. You can put a hundred in. You can put a thousand in. And how wide is this graph? What are the x values? How wide is this graph? Infinity, right? So I would like to write all real numbers. Okay, that's that's what I like to say is all real numbers. So my domain is the x is equal to all real numbers. Or I like the cursive R because it's easier for me to write. Okay, cursive R. Now the range. Reach for your range. Reach for your range, right? Reach for your range. It's important. Watch. Get this. There's no graph down here. You guys agree? There's no graph down here. It just starts and goes up. Now, it doesn't really start at zero, right? Because it never touches zero. But the range is from above zero. So we're going to write y is greater than zero. Y not equal to y is greater than zero for that range. Okay? So the range is up. 
So the range is y is greater than zero. Okay. Okay. What do you think? Thumbs up on that one. Okay. Example two. Let's take a look at example two. Let's try and graph that on decimals also. Okay. I'm gonna go clear that. I'm gonna go 100 parentheses. Uh, 0 0.5 to the power of x, okay? Right, now this one I'm going to have to probably change my scales. But I know for sure it goes through at 100. I know for sure it goes at 100, okay? Alright, so it's going to the same shape, but I know it must go through at 100. So I'm going to put a point at 100. So I'm going to go, oh, I'll go 50, 100, 1, 2, 3. And here's how smart we are, because we are smart. It starts at 100. Okay, what's half? What's half of 100? So I have a dot of 50, right? What's half of 50? Yeah, right about there. What's half of 25? Right, 12.5 and so and half of that. And so I know my graph is going to look something like this. Okay, again, I need three things. When you take a test, I want three things. I want the shape that's going down, right? I want the y-intercept, which is this number. And I also want the asymptote. So let's put the asymptote in, okay? I need three things. I need the shape. I need the y-intercept. And yes, so I'm going to put my asymptote right in here. That's my third thing. My asymptote is at y equals zero. So what's the domain? How wide is this graph? Domain? What's the domain? How wide is this graph? Infinite. So we're going to say x equals all real numbers. Okay. The range. What's the height of the graph? What's the range? What's the height of the graph? It's the same as this one. It is, isn't it? Same as this one? Y is greater than zero. Okay. Now, here's what I know. <clears throat> and this makes sense. Okay. Because we're smart. Okay, here's what I know. If it doubles, 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 it's going to grow. Agree? If it's half, 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 it's going to decay. So if the base, if the base is bigger than one, it grows. Does that make sense? If the base is a fraction less than one, it just decays, right? So this one's easy. Is this one growth and decay? Growth, right? It's got to be growth. Sometimes it says find f of 3, so I'm just going to plug 3 into this one, okay? So it's definitely growth. It's definitely growth. And I'm going to go f of 3 equals negative 2 times 5 to the third power. I'm just going to use my calculator. I'm going to go negative 2 times 5 to the power of 3. And I get a negative number, but this negative number is going to grow. Things can grow exponentially in a negative way. All right, well, think about the national debt, huh? Just for example, right? Think about the national debt. <laughs> it's growing exponentially, it, not at a good rate. Okay, so there's my answer, okay? How about four? Is it growth or decay? Well, I'm taking half of it. 0.5, taking half of it, half, half, half of it, so it's got to be decay, and it's decay because of the base. Let's plug in negative 3, so I'll go y is equal to 3 times 0 0.5 to the negative 3 power. I'm just going to use my calculator, it's the only way to go. 3 times 0 0.5 to the power of negative 3, right? Now I get 24. Now that seems strange that we got a bigger number. Okay, so I got 24. 
Okay, so tell me. You said it was decay, I agree. You told me you see decay, and we knew it was going to get smaller, smaller, smaller. How do you get this answer here? Come on, be smart. Yeah, Preston. Well, because it's a negative 3, and 3 is increasing you know, exponential, it's going to be a even number. It will go from negative to positive and then back to negative. So it basically just kind of grows by itself. You're right. close. You're really close. So because it's a negative number, think about this. If you go back, here, check it out. You're really close, okay? Here's how I remember, right? It's going to look like that. You agree? Here's negative 3. What's the value? Which and then, then it would be 12, and then it would be 6, and then it would be 3. See how that works, right? That's why, because we're looking back in history, back in time. What was it before we took half of it and half of it and half of it? Okay? You were close, okay? All right, turn, turn the page and see what we got on the other side. What do you guys think? Not too bad? Especially with Desmos, it doesn't always make sense, huh? Okay. And then, all right. Okay, so using this table, make values. Okay, so let's go ahead and go negative 1 and 2.7. Yeah, about there. I'm just guessing, right? 0 and 4. It's about there. 1 and 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2 and 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 3, and 13.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13.5, about there, okay? And I'll let you get caught up, okay? I'll let you get caught up. Okay, so just plot the points. Now, does it appear like it's growing? Does it appear like it curves a little bit? It does. It's got a little bit of a curve. So I'm going to say, yeah, it's exponential. I'm going to say, yeah, it is exponential. So I'm going to kind of, kind of try and draw it in. It's going to look something like this, right? That's what I got. I think it's exponential. Now, what's the equation? So we're going to start with this y equals a b to the x power, okay? To get the equation. Write that down. Write this down. This is our equation. This is the one we're going to use in this whole chapter. We're going to use this equation over and over again, okay? Now, I'm going to show you this right here. That's a. That's A. The value of A in this example is at 4, because it's like the y-intercept, okay? So the value of A is right there. That's A. I know that for sure, okay? Right? A is always the beginning amount. So if you have 0, that's where you start. You agree with that? You start at 0, that's where the beginning amount. So we're going to put a 4, so I'm going to put a 4 there, okay? So an equation, I'm going to go y equals 4 b to the x, okay? y equals 4b to the x, okay? Now, the way you can find b is you want to find the growth rate. Now, write this down, too. The b is equal to the second term divided by the first term, okay? Now, well, i got to go back up to here because my second term is 4, and my first term is 2.7, okay? So to get to the growth rate, what I'm looking for is what did I multiply by, okay? To get that, just divide the second one by the first one, and we'll be multiplied by. So I'm going to try that, okay? So my growth rate is going to be, let's see, in this case, B is going to be uh, 4 divided by 2.7. I'm use, just use my calculator. What is that? I don't know. Clear. 4 divided by 2.7 is about 1.48. So 
So here's my equation. Y equals 4 times a 1.48 to the x power. It is growth. How am I doing, okay? Okay, last one. First, let's graph this. In fact, we did this exact equation in our journal. If we take a look, we did this one. You don't have to, but I'll show you. We did this one in our journal. So we're going to do it again real quickly. But if I go back to my journal, I take a look at it. Give me a second. We graphed it right, right there, right? We graphed it right there. So here's how I graphed it. I started at 1, and I doubled 1, and I got 2, and I doubled 2, and I got 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm doubling, right? Doubling. I went to 3, and I doubled 4, so I got 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then up to 16. Um, I had to have 1 half, and 1 fourth, and 1 fourth, and so here's my graph. So my base is 2. And I'll stop for a minute let you catch up, okay? My base is 2. There's an invisible number I did not write. Okay, I didn't write the 1. Did we get that? I didn't write the 1. There's an invisible number right here, 1. But that's going to be my y intercept, right? My 1. And then I just doubled. I just doubled. So 1, I got 2. I got 4. I got 8. In fact, I had one fourth, so I could double it, get one half. I double that, so I could get one right. Okay. Now, let's translate it. So it says translate three units to the left and one up. So I'm going to move it. I'm going to move this graph, so I'll move it in a different color. So I'm going to, and then I also have my asymptote in here, which I really want. I'm going to need my asymptote for what I'm going to ask. Here's my asymptote. I've got to have my asymptote in there. Okay. So I'm going to move this graph. Let's see. Move it one unit up and three units. Well, yeah, that should be an S left. Okay, so what I'm doing is take this point right here. One unit up and three left. One, two, three. I also have to move my asymptote, okay? So my asymptote is right here. So I change my asymptote to y equals one. And then my graph should look like this. Here's the equation of the new graph. G of x is equal to a 2 to the x plus 3 plus 1. That's my new equation. The domain is still, for the red graph, the domain is still x equals all real numbers. But tell me about the range of the, of the red graph. Tell me about the range. Tell me about the range of the red graph. Here's the red graph. Tell me about the range. Reach for your range. Where does it start? Where does the red graph start? What's the height? What's the height of the red graph? The red graph. So it does two, but it can go below two to one point five, right? Can you go below one point five? You can keep going below, but can it ever reach one? Will it ever reach one? Because you got your asymptote, don't you? So it's going to be bigger than one. Everything bigger than one. So it could be a one point one, but it can't be a one. So our range is going to be y is greater than 1, but not equal, okay? So that's all I have for today. Um, page 161, 1 to 14 all, and you can use decimals if you need to. And let's take a mass break. Who needs a mass break, huh? Okay, let's go on outside, take a mass break, and then come back in, okay? All right.